are widely known professionals and investors, but also manage dynamic online presences. And they do that within that subculture, mostly on crypto Twitter. Dovi Wan is the founding partner of Primitive Ventures, a Coindesk advisor, and an important bridge between the English speaking and Chinese speaking crypto communities. And Nick Carter is a founding partner of Castle Island Ventures. He is the creator of data site coin metrics and a host of the popular podcast On the Brink. He does all of that while managing a social media profile that many people look to for separating the signal from the noise in crypto. Dovi, Nick, thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks for having us. So, Dovi, I want to go ahead and start with you. What's the main difference you see between crypto investors in, let's say, I'm here in the U.S. Um, and those in China? So, for instance, do they have different views on why crypto is beneficial? Do they hold cryptocurrencies different? Different things like that. Yeah. Um, so I think uh, here in China. So because I'm right now in China and I just came back actually 20 days ago, and I've gone through this mandatory centralized quarantine um, in like a designated hotel, and everything has been cut off, and I can only eat the food that the hotel sent me. Um, so I think here it's a completely different um, setup. I would say, and comparing with like the American investor and like here in China and also in Asia in general. And I would say the investor profile are more like retail driven and we don't have a lot of like quote unquote like institution here. Like the only institution here are the banks and banks are pretty much like state owns. Um, and we have some larger, just a larger size like quant traders or just like high frequency trader. And I would consider them as a prosumer, but definitely not like the American style institution. Um, and um, on the other hand, here, like a lot of regulation for like cryptocurrency trading or just cryptocurrency as an asset itself is just not clear. And so like, that's why we don't have all this like, regulatory, um, like, so we don't have all this like, regulatory boundary, I would say. And so like things here can be more, uh, more like wild west. And, and so it's, Definitely a lot of hustling, a lot of like pirates like here and there and like tons of scammers. Um, and so all the retail investors and they consider Bitcoin not as a, like majority of them are not considering Bitcoin or like cryptocurrency as like a store of value or or like any kind of investment asset. And it's more like alternative investment of the alternative investment. Um, and Chinese investors are tend to be very speculative. And I think that's partially due to the social mobility here is like kind of like like just like uh, uh kind of being in like a stagnation um and people has been speculating on like real estate asset on on like all the other speculative assets and and like right now uh cryptocurrency or any just digital asset actually um like offered another vehicle or just like a medium of exchange for a better speculation and because it's harder to so it's like harder to capture and um so it's kind of hidden on the ground so like under the ground and like police will have harder time to actually go after those scammers so so like that's what we have seen for uh over you know like last five six years um and as for like bitcoin specifically and i think um one thing that's kind of different here is because we have the majority of the mining ecosystem um so most of the miners here are very sophisticated and so i will consider them not as um so not as like a big speculator and they are more like long-term holders of bitcoin because mining itself is a long-term investment with a like with a massive like sun cost and it's like a long-term call option where you can buy bitcoin over time right um so i think the miners here they're pretty solid bitcoiners like most of them right thanks right. thanks to Toby. so it sounds th this is why we brought you on the show and this is why we brought nick on the show so you're uh, definitely an investor you have your own uh shop you're out there uh you know allocating um but you sound like a media person you sound like you could host this show uh, for us you're you're definitely uh, a person who who has i guess taken over some of that role in, in media and nick you've explicitly done that i'm a listener of the podcast um now what we're seeing a little bit here is folks like both of you uh and and you nick with skin in the game you're investors but you're also adding to um the message you're also adding to content and in a way competing directly with media what does that mean, Nick, um, that folks like yourself, 
uh, are sharing those information asymmetries, sharing your insight. You know, crypto Twitter saw the virus coming, for example. Um, I didn't get my information from the mainstream media about the virus. They're telling me masks didn't work and all the rest of it. Um, but I heard it from folks like you, who I follow on crypto Twitter. What's your reaction to that? What will that do that folks like yourselves are now in the media game? Well, I think it's an inevitable consequence of uh, a kind of margins in the VC industry being compressed. Um, you know, I like to joke that uh, every business is the content business these days. Um, you know, there's a lot of opportunity in having an extremely vocal brand that people trust. Um, some of the best VC firms are extremely solid content businesses as well. Um, crypto is that on overdrive. I mean, this isn't just an asset class. It's not just an investment for many people. It's something which is for them highly political. Um, they're expressing political opinions about how society should be configured. Uh, so not only do they want to consume a lot of content related to that, but they want to broadcast their opinions. Um, and producing content, you know, relating to my views on Bitcoin and crypto was was very natural. There, were, there was never much of a question over, you know, whether I would, tr you know, use that strategy to amplify, uh, you know, my professional endeavors. Um, you know, I, I'm a former journalist, actually, uh, although that was just a brief career. Um, I've been a writer, um, you know, for, for much of my life. And so I always wanted to share my views. And you had time point. to help Abby Johnson at Fidelity and you had time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, not as her like a, a personal, uh, you know, vassal on any That's how we sell it. That's how we sell it. That's how we sell it. <laughs> and also like crunching data on like core metrics. And I just don't know how Nick, you can manage like everything. Well, the trick is to just not um, have much of a personal life, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, I, I love um, I love creating content for people. Um, when when folks tell me that you know an article I wrote helped them, you know, convince their uncle that you know Bitcoin is a valid phenomenon, uh, that makes me really happy. So it's not just you know talking my own book constantly. It is something. Uh, which is just a, a core part of my philosophy. Um, and, you know, Davi, you, you do something very similar. I mean, I certainly follow you um, to kind of translate the, the big chasm between East and West uh, on Twitter. It's really hard to get reliable information. Um, so, you know, I rely on, on, on voices like yours as well. Yeah, I guess I wanted to bring it back to you, Dovi, because are you guys in China getting, are the investors in China getting all of the information that they need about crypto with China's great firewall? Like, is some of that being censored? Um, yeah, so here we have the Twitter equivalent, that's Weibo, and I, and, and I have decent followers here. So I've got a lot of just first information and just information fee by actually my followers themselves, um, like which I really appreciate it uh, because I myself, I probably hear on the ground uh, four months or a year at most. So, so I, so I pretty much like can't get like, all the information like all by myself. Um, and if you asking me, how are they get access to, um, so to the actual factual crypto news out there in China. And I think they actually rely also people like me and many other like just like uh, like um, influencer on Chinese Weibo and either to translate or just like, tell them what's going on outside. Because I think language is the biggest barrier because not like Chinese people, most of them can't just like can't read English, right? And, and um, so they're still getting, so it is, it is getting better, but like it's still a huge gap out there. Like say for instance, and, and so I have three other live streaming event tonight with all the uh, Chinese media. And uh, so in one of them, a lot of people ask me, uh, is Bitcoin going to be POS space? Because that's what they heard. And I was like, that's definitely not true, right? Where you heard that rumor from? And so they were saying, oh, there's some, be cashier influencer on Weibo saying like Bitcoin core gonna switch the consensus algorithm from POW to POS, things like that. And, and so I think there's a lot of um, just like, like the cost to get like accuracy here in China is extremely high. It's not just the great firewall. And I think it's more the language. And 
So, um, so basically, at the end of the day of my last live streaming with the Chinese media, and I just, just I tell everybody saying, if there's one thing other than holding Bitcoin, and please learn English. Um, yeah. Interesting stuff. Um, Nick, I want to get to one other question about your book. I said I would come back to it. Uh, talking of your book, not the book you've written. Um, and that's investment. Oh, book. Um, real quick. Uh, yeah, real, real quick. Um, so you've been criticizing Twitter an awful lot lately, uh, especially about you know having the right uh, social credit or status. And it's been a lot of fun. Um, now, as an investor, um, you know, are there any things out there, and, I, and, I, and I, I know I've discussed this with you privately before, and I wouldn't call you a Bitcoin maximalist at all, but you're certainly skeptical, skeptical about a lot of these blockchain uh, projects that can, you know, deliver on all their promises. Do you see an opportunity, though, to actually get to that point with a platform? As an investor, I'm asking for the investor hat right now, where we can get a platform built that will compete with these guys and really uh, have that mobility, or is it in Jack Dorsey's uh, Twitter as a client, um, you know, plugging into Bitcoin. Is that the answer? Well, I hope Jack Dorsey can succeed with his Blue Sky initiative, but I highly doubt that Twitter will be the one to disrupt itself. Um, I don't think we have many uh, examples in history of large, successful kind of oligopolies being able to actually disrupt themselves. It normally comes from outside. Uh, my guess is that the uh, next Twitter, whatever it is, doesn't look much like Twitter, uh, and it is not created by Twitter or Blue Sky. Uh, my guess is that it would look something more like Urbit. Um, you know, not to to focus on Urbit specifically, but a system where people have far more autonomy and more discretion over their property on that platform. Uh, Twitter is just a set of rules for how you can talk to people, uh, except the people that manage the rules also periodically exercise eminent domain um, over the handles, right? You know, they they have this widespread practice of banning for, you know, oftentimes what are, really trivial offenses. Um, so my guess is that the next social media platform will not attempt to enforce some sort of globalized rule set over what's permissible and what's not permissible. My guess is that it's much more federated for the simple reason that we don't have a global legal system that suits everybody. Um, and again, if I had to guess, there would probably be um, much greater respect for property rights on a platform like that. If you mingle your labor with a handle in the Lockean theory, that's genuine property. That's something that you should be able to retain the fruits. Had, had a look at the Twitch platform on uh, BSV yet? I haven't tried it out, but maybe I will. Um, I, I'm not 100% certain they uh, also have a respect for property rights. But yeah, I think the next system, which is Twitter-like, would have to uh, highly codify much greater respect for people's property. Um, and, you know, also find a way to exercise discretion in terms of, you know, banning, uh, you know, really hostile voices or something. Uh, it's a difficult, um, you know, uh, it's a difficult compromise, but clearly thanks Twitter a ton doesn't for your, work for everyone. Thanks a ton for your time today, Nick. Um, great. Thanks both investors for sharing your thoughts. Um, and everyone out there, uh, we'll see you both uh, in a few minutes um, at our next event, uh, hopefully. Now let's go over to the having clock. As you know, we've been following this um, and we're four hours and 52 minutes away. I don't have the exact block that we're at right now, but uh, that looks like it's coming up. We're going to have a show at our Twitter handle, Coindesk Markets. It'll be kind of like a call-in show. Folks are going to be coming in. We have a few guests and some of those are coming up next, uh, a little preview of what we have. Um, so a few hours away. Um, now we've got Neha 